I remembered Steve from Rape Man and Big Black and, and one of the CDs that we played quite a lot on the last tour was Rid of Me by PJ Harvey and um, the kind of the fact that he managed to capture sound in a room you could feel the room moving you, when the cymbals were hit you could feel the, the air in the room it was really impressive we came back from Turkey ten days ago and we worked through Bulgaria and Romania and uh, Croatia and when we were playing there we were playing full-on rock and roll it tracks like how many more times where I was kicking the vocal up to exactly how it used to be on Zep 1 and, ho and even rock and roll I was doing all the notes and Jimmy was looking across at me and smiling and it's almost like a, I feel why have I got to do it like this why don't I do it like Clark Kent would do it or you know or Tom Waits or somebody why don't I just change it around a bit because you know you but then again, old Frank Sinatra has to do my way, and he ain't going to do it as a rumba. I found that working with the other musicians, the younger guys, was, although it was exciting because there was such hunger uh, and determination, there was no history to their knowledge of music. It was a different area. I mean, whoever was happening in England or America at the time in 1991 or whatever, I knew about that just like they did. And I didn't really think that Echo and the Bunny Men were going to be a major influence on my life, although I liked Mac very much, you know. So I wasn't really affected by contemporary trends, I just pulled out what I liked. But the guys I was working with didn't have the route that Jimmy's got, they didn't have the, um, the same mutual zone to to call upon musically. Um, although I did work with a Canadian guy who was very heavily into Moby Great, which was a bit of a bonus. <laughs> when it comes to recording new material, I really want to try different tricks. And I don't want to be heard as a guy singing notes that, only, that attract dogs and, and strange wild animals. Uh, because the whole deal about hard rock singing became heavy metal then the whole deal of masculinity was you're not really a rock singer until you can hit those notes and I think that whole analogy of what it's all about is hysterical you know and also quite obsolete now this is a new chapter and then we spend a lot more time together um, yeah we, uh, we do a lot of laughing now Mostly at ourselves, I think. I don't know whether I've improved. I don't think I've deteriorated. I'm basically, you know, it's just that I've still got the same approach that I've had all the way through, really. Which is, uh, you know, relying on, on, on um, inspiration and spontaneity and then, and then making something out of that, you know. I mean, so, some of the tracks that, that are on there are just like one guitar, that's all there is, you know, one, one guitar take all the way through. Some of them are done in one take, you know, sometimes it's full start, second take, that's the one. And, and then after that, it's more a question of like, as far as the, the colours and the filigrees, it's, it's a question of what, more of what you don't play than what you do can be equally as important, you know. Suddenly having like the freedom of coming back to like, you know, like the four piece, it's, it's been great, wonderful, because we can just change things around every night and, you know, we scare each other to death, it's great. <laughs> I really missed Robert along the way, you know, we had little areas where we'd join up, you know, he'd sing on my record and I'd play on his, but there, there was never the communication musically between myself and another vocalist that we had together, you know, I mean, it was very interesting, if it, there was an idea, if I threw an idea at Robert, he, he'd know what it was straight away, and vice versa, you know, and I didn't get that with, with uh, any of the guys that, you know, I worked with. And it is what it is, I mean, we put a really good c catalogue of, of, of music together in the past, and so, you know, we, we, we're measured and judged by that, and we say, you know, I'll, I'll stand up and be judged by that.
Basically, we were promoting the first album over most of it. So there would be like different, ver every time there'd be a version of Communication Breakdown and Days of Confused, for instance. But the, the, what's so fascinating about it is that each different version of, uh, of Communication Breakdown is different. You know, there's, there's a subtle difference in approach and sometimes quite radical. And, and, and it just, because of that, because of, of the way that we would approach the numbers, and, I mean, it's supposed to be an important showcase on radio, we'd go in and make a song up on the spot. You know, this is how, 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 how you know, free and easy going we were.